This is Anthony Priscilla doing more algebra today with my college algebra class. Discussing zeros of polynomials, we've already uh, defined zeros, worked with the remainder and factor theorem and stated the division algorithm. Then using the synthetic division, we went through, okay, write this polynomial in the form divisor times quotient plus remainder. We've done that example. Noticing that this last number is the remainder. So you go x minus k. That's the um, divisor. They're using q of x for the quotient plus the remainder. So we did a couple of problems like that. That one and And number six, here we were doing the synthetic division. Up above here. X minus K times, remember how you decrease the exponent by one. That last number's the constant. This number's the constant. The last number's the remainder. Now, number seven just says, okay, let's use synthetic division to, to find f of k. A very straightforward, simple problem. If we put k inside here, you write the coefficients. One, negative four, three. And then let's see carry down the 1. 1 times negative 1, negative 1. Negative 4 plus a negative 1, negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 1 is 5. Plug, uh, adding those, we get an 8. The remainder theorem says that this is f of negative 1. Well, might not be a bad idea to go ahead and just to convince yourself of that. Plug negative 1 in for x here. I'm going to use my calculator and plug negative 1 in. So I'm plugging negative 1 in to that polynomial. Mm -hmm. So plugging negative 1 in. The parentheses, negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 plus 3. When you plug negative 1 in, then we better get 8. And are we? Yes, I'm not sure if y'all can see that, but the glare is kind of bad in this room. So, just illustrating something I tried to illustrate earlier, that this last number, the remainder, is the number you get when you just plug that number into x. Now, number 8 we're actually going to factor a third degree polynomial. It says factor this polynomial given that negative 8 is a 0. So that's your number k. And the way we're going to do this is we set up our synthetic division. Negative 8 is k. Then 4, 19, x cubed, x squared, x, no x is at all, so, so um, we didn't have to put any zeros up there to hold the spaces. So carry down the 4, 4 times negative 8, negative 32. Nineteen minus thirty-two, that's gonna be a negative thirteen. Negative thirteen times negative eight, negative times negative is positive. One oh four. Negative one oh one plus one oh four is three. Three times negative eight is negative twenty-four. Twenty-four minus twenty-four is zero. That shouldn't be a shock to us because we were told that negative 8 is a 0. That means if you plug negative 8 in for x, you'll get 0. 
Also, the remainder, when you divide, will be zero. So to write out the, uh, let's see, is this, to write out the divisor times quotient, the way we were doing on earlier problems, we go x minus k. That x minus a negative 8, so that's going to be x plus 8. And then get the quotient from all of this. We started with an x to the third. So it's going to be an x squared, an x, and a constant. And at this point, we have a quadratic polynomial right there. And we can factor that. Let's see. Let's just factor it with trial and error. We have numbers that multiply together to give 3, 1, and 3. Numbers that multiply together to get 4, there's 1 times 4, or 2 times 2. And let's see, how do we, what, this is that, I'm carrying down the x plus 8. I'm writing down the two sets of parentheses. I think we're going to use the 1x times 4x. And the 3 and 1, if I put it like this, 3 times 1. Second sign is plus, so two of the first. So if you fold out x minus 3 times 4x minus 1, you'll see you're getting negative 12x, negative 1x. Yeah, that's factored. So there's the factored form for number 8. So you put that right in here. And number 9 is the same type of problem. Number nine, same type of problem. You'll, let's see, let me get a fresh sheet of paper. This is a fourth degree polynomial and it says the multiplicity is two. That means you're gonna have to do synthetic division twice. And instead of just x minus k being a factor, x minus k is going to be a factor twice, so it's going to be x minus k squared, but we'll get to that in a moment. So first write out k equals negative 2, 1x to the fourth, 3x to the third, minus 30x squared, minus 124x, minus 120. Up a little. Three down the one. One times negative two, negative two. Three minus two is one. One times negative two is what? Negative two. Negative thirty minus two. Negative thirty-two. Negative thirty-two times negative two is a positive sixty-four. Negative 124 plus 64 is negative 60. Negative times negative positive. Notice we got a zero, which we should have expected because we're told that negative 2 was a zero. Now we need to do synthetic division again. Why? Well, we're told that k equals negative 2 multiplicity twice. That means that k minus, excuse me, x minus k is a 0 twice. So, can you see my blue in? Now, I'm not really going to use this part here. Now, I'm just using the, let's see, we started with the x to the fourth, so I'm using x to the third, x squared, x constant. Carry down the 1, multiply, I add negative 1 times, uh, 1 times negative 2, negative 2, 1 plus a negative 2 is negative 1, negative 1 times negative 2 is a positive 2, negative 30 plus, negative 32 plus 2 is negative 30, negative 30 times negative 2 is a positive 60, negative 60, plus 60, 0. 
So we went from x to the fourth to x to the third. Now we're down to an x squared. So to write out the factored form, you first go x minus k. The k is a negative 2, so x minus a negative 2. And that x minus k was um, a factor twice. So we write x plus 2 squared. If it is in multiplicity 3, you do synthetic division three times and put an exponent cube. Now let's see. Here we'd have 1x squared minus 1x minus 30. So let's factor that. Uh, x and x. Most of you fall up pretty quickly, right? 5 times 6 to get a negative 30 as the product and add to negative 1, a plus 5 minus 6. So what I'm about to write in circle, there it is. The natural question to ask is, well, what if you were doing this and you got something that wouldn't factor at this point? Well, you could still find those zeros. Like the zeros are negative 2, negative 5. What would make this one zero here? 6. You could still find the zeros, even if you had something that didn't factor, by using the quadratic formula. And that's what you'll do on the next one, which we'll pick up next time.